YouTube viewers and welcome back to the Self Made Auto Channel. Got us a 2005 Hondu CRV rear wheel bearing shot. Besides being loose like it is, it is extremely loud driving down the road. So we'll get the screws out of the rotor first. Use our impact driver. Did a video on this little guy. Handy tool to have in the shop. Especially for these screws. Which really don't serve much of a purpose. So if they break, it's not a big deal. If you can't get them out, just drill the head off it. Sometimes I'll take the air hammer. Chisel a bit. Get them on the side and give them a little turn. There's the socks for that. Now these older Hondus in New York State can propose a lot of problems trying to do a wheel bearing, as I'm sure we're going to find out. Because any bushing or any bolt that you have to unhook that goes through a bushing can always be an issue. Apologize for the recent lack of videos. The shop has been insanely busy, and I just haven't uh, haven't had the time to be honest with you. I'll try to get this one today. Hopefully, it works out well for us. There's tons and tons of big jobs. You gonna be friendly or no? It doesn't feel like you want to be. We'll try a different method. Looks like tire delivery. Tires! Seems like we just got done putting on winter tires. Now we're putting summer tires back on. Yes! I just want to get the bracket here for the caliper for the hose. Get it out of the way. I tried to take the just that bolt out, but it's gonna break, so I just took the whole bracket off. I don't know if we can fish that around, probably not, which really doesn't matter. We just stick it back out of our way for the time being. So essentially we have to get the axle shaft out. That's our goal. So I just tapped it in there a little bit. Make sure that's free. Uh, to do this, like I say, it can be kind of difficult. What I'm hoping perhaps that we can get this bolt out, you know, to get the steering knuckle, what I'd like to do is get the two lower bolts out. That one there, this one here. Now this has the cam on it. Now if we get this one out, it is gonna have to be realigned, uh, obviously, because we're not gonna get it back exactly the way it goes. I'm hoping with those two out that we can loosen, oops, sorry about the light, loosen the top one, I can swing, you know, the knuckle out enough to get the axle out. However, you know, if either of these two bolts are seized into bushings, which is pretty, pretty good odds, then we're gonna have to find another alternative, whether it's, you know, pulling this whole mess off, one way or another, the axle shaft has to come out. But that is the goal. Sorry about the white balance or whatever backlighting I guess it would be.
side. I better get something with a little more leverage. I'll compromise with it, we'll leave the door half open. Real with me right now? Can't even get the nut off this thing. Oh, you son of a monkey. If we can't get the nut off, it makes you wonder if the bolt's even gonna come out of the bushing. Let's try the one back here on this cam bolt. Yeah. Oh, that one come right through this nice and easy. Doesn't mean anything, but okay, now that one's loose. Uh, probably to get a little heat. Haven't used the induction heater in a while. Uh, Might be a perfect application for this. Oh, we got smoke. That's good. Might be a little easier than getting a flame down here. We'll get her nice and toasty. See if that helps. Yes. However, the, the bolt is not turning on the other side, so we won't get too excited just yet. loosen it up and it'll come on the other side see if the bolt turns I doubt that it will I'm not trying to be a pessimist just I've worked on a lot of rusty crap you know how things usually go I could be wrong though What's this shit? it could be turning the whole bushing which it probably is That's what I'm assuming is happening right now. All right, so what we'll do, we'll get the old long barrel, see if we can't hit it from the back side. See if I got an old 17 mil socket we can throw on it. I found the socket. I'm gonna stick that right on the nut that we backed off. See if I can't get in here, it's on quite an angle. Probably not going to be able to get in straight enough to do anything. Big nasty spark. Try hitting it on this side, maybe it'll jiggle it loose. Never know. I think she moved, fellas. What's up, Miss Lil? Bones for you. Anybody important? Mm. From down the road. Mm -hmm. Uh, don't want to call him back unless he's going to plug the lift up. All right, let's see there, guys. Sorry about all the movement. Let's see if this works. No. Oops, well, that ain't moving it. Uh, yeah, I'll talk to him. Thanks, Mrs. O. Uh, you're welcome. 
you do a fine job. Um. I still think it's seized in the bushing. However, it did start to come out, so I think I already gave it a toot, but I'll give it a toot more for what it's worth. I'm using coil today. We'll drive it back in, try to drive it back out. You know, work. All right, it did come out quite a bit that time. Quite a bit easier, rather. Go back in with it. Oh yeah, she popped right in. Just hope I'm not messing up this uh, not here on the other side. Let me get another cart. Otherwise, you guys are gonna have vertigo before it's over. All right. Whoa. Let me make sure this knot is surviving. It appears to be, and I'm wondering if that, I'm wondering if that bolt is loose now. Darn sure it wasn't spinning. All right, let's hit it some more. More tootage. Just lost my straw. Wish everything had the built-in straw like the WD cans. That's a lovely feature. Oh yeah. So I just moved out pretty easy that time. I'd move the camera out so you can see, but shuffling so that's the knot that goes on the back side that's what we were hitting on of course we were hitting on our sacrificial socket on the flange of the nut so now just move for me little fella that's all I'm asking Spin and spray. Whoa! I think I just pushed it right back. Oh man! Trying to juggle. Not <laughs> really talented here today. She's lubed up. I can't push it. Get back here with the pry bar. And there's like Zippo to pry against. Nothing. Let's see if I can just push it. Up. That's right, fella. You're coming with me. See, so the bolts come out pretty easy. Take the nut off and just, you know, pop it out. One down. So what I want to do, we'll get this cam off here. I'm doubting this bolt's going to move either. 
that little guy off there. Maybe it will. Maybe it won't. Always assume the worst. Try the same thing here, big nasty. Oh, it's gonna get me. Oh yeah, but we're close. Wondering. I don't know why we spray stuff. Feel good, I guess. I'm gonna get 14 mil and try to work this. Looks like 14 mil on that side. I don't know if that has a little, little bit of tension on it. Nope, no real tension. Just a tiny, tiny bit. I'm gonna see if I can't just wiggle that up out of there. And there's your cam bolt for adjusting was it the rear toe on this, I guess it would be. And then this is the outer cam that goes on it. Now the bolt has little flats on it. When you put it together, it locks on into the little flat. So when you turn the cam, you can see it's oblonged. All right? All right. See our axle jiggled back in there. We'll give that a little spray. Now, if, if luck is on our side, so we still have our parker brake cable attached, so that's gonna give some tension. I'd like to see if we can push the axle in and just pick this up enough to slide the axle out. Get that loose. Whoa. I'm gonna get a point and bit for the air hammer. These little guys are pretty shockproof so far. I've probably only dropped it a couple dozen times. but is to just get the axle right out of our way. Yes. That's that. that way we're not trying to work around it. We don't take a chance of damaging the boot. Now technically I should have yanked the hub off while everything was still intact, but if things went horribly wrong here, I needed a little bit of a backup plan. So I didn't. So now the axle's out of the way. I'm gonna stick a couple alignment bars where the bolts used to go just to kind of hold it for us, if I can. That way there we can use the slide hammer like we typically do. That one's not going to hold very well. Hopefully good enough. Usually it only takes a few whacks. if it cooperates. And the alignment bars don't go flying. Let's see what happens. One 
to barbecue, baby. So in this case, using the hub tamer or hub grappler, whichever one you have, assuming you have one, or the, I think Harbor Freight, I think you guys mentioned, makes a wheel bearing tool. In this case, it's, eh, it's easier than shot press because we don't have to take any of the parking brake stuff off. However, it doesn't make us exempt from having to do an alignment, which is kind of the nice feature of the tool most of the time. Because we took the cam bolt out, we, you know, we have no choice. I don't really see any other way doing it other than removing the entire lower control arm, but frankly, it's easier just to get alignment. See if we can't get the snap ring out. It's gonna be tight. Oh, you're gonna be like that, huh? And we might need to get the air hammer and massage this one a little bit. Oh, need to quit being a wuss. middle name there we go get it out of there hang on to her because she'll go zinging oh look at that one didn't have any zing in it at all i always buy new ones because often i destroy them unless i have a new one then i never destroy it so here's the plan. The front of these are tapered. I don't know, it's hard to tell in the video perhaps, but it's tapered here, goes flat, tapers, and again, that goes to the backing plate. I wanna to try to get the bearing moving first. So I'm gonna put a cone on the back of it. Now, don't just give this the classic reach around with any old cone because there is a speed sensor back there and you can snap it off. So we'll just flat face it for now, get the bearing moving then stick a cone up here because if we stick a cone up here first on this taper it's first of all it's going to want to spread out our cup and i think if we get it moving <laughs> a dog fight going on over there if we get it moving first i think we'll be in better shape and then put the cone on or put the uh, cup on rather let's see So we'll go like this. It's kind of funny. One of one of my other videos where I was using this, the guy's calling me an a-hole because I had the tapered side facing out. And he's like, that goes into the cone, bro. And when you're pulling flat, nobody really cares what way it goes. Flat's flat, baby. But he was pretty mad, said he's gonna unsubscribe from me. heard it snap so that was the torque I wanted to overcome initially <laughs> I dropped my balls there we go. and then I'll find the cone or cup I keep calling it a cone probably because it's gonna be cone shaped when we're done actually I think I have one that I've already bothered out a little bit that one looks like she might fit pretty good let's see I'm, I'm gonna put it on the flat side not the tapered side as Mrs. O would say, just to be spiteful. Just being spiteful. So she's told me a time or two.
and it's out. And there is the old bearing and that has the magnetic tone ring on it. Like I said, there's a speed sensor sitting up inside there, so don't get silly. This is the part everybody loves. Especially those wearing headphones. Gosh. Eh, that's better. You gotta clean out that groove. Otherwise, you might have problems putting your snap ring in. Oh, it looks good. I mean, real good. Didn't think I'd forget you. Man, I used like a bunch of brake cleaner shots in that Prius video. The next video, no brake clean. Boy, you guys went crazy on me. I know I've been lacking in the brake clean, so I tried to make up for it in that video. The people are demanding. Even added some fancy music to it. I mean, I can do that again. You just don't want any, you know, rust and crud falling back in there when you're jiggling that new bearing in. Give a little shot of some thrust here. Lubrication. Just wipe that around a little bit. It's a pretty close tolerance fit, so you don't need a bunch of stuff. All right, I'll probably go see if the bearing's even here. New clip. There's the part number on that. Got it from the Napper SMA sticker. I'm gonna start selling these, I swear. And that is the bearing I bought for this. They're an SKF bearing. Now, this is where you can all go wrong. ABS side, non-ABS side. So make sure you put the right side in. So it's gonna go in like this. What we need to do is back it up on the back side. Got to find a cone that's going to fit that good without hitting the speed sensor. That's the critical part. Get our forcing screw. And then I've got a cup that goes on the bearing that's going to push on the outer race. That is also the important part. So stick that on there like so. The one to back it up. Through there. Yeah, I just did double check. Better to find out now than when it's all the way in. Running in until it hits bottom. Take all that stuff out. And honestly, the circ clips are quite cheap. 
of these snap rings. A lot easier than trying to clean up the old one and all that stuff. Plus, if you send this one flying and can't find it, you can always use the old one. These are cooperating quite well. Right, that went in all the way. That's good. I do like to give them just a little love tap just to be sure. Each way. Don't hit the seal now. All right, yeah, it's in. It's because we cleaned out the groove so good. We've got to get the race off from this little guy. I'm going to use the puller. Lots of methods you could use. We're going to try to grab it with this. I think there is just enough of an edge that we can do so. Oops. Oh, damn. I always grab the broken one. Let's see what it feels like. Yeah, maybe. I'll go like this. No tires. See if we can't use our vice to assist us. Squeezing it. Switch hands here, fella. I'm so gonna drop it. There. Didn't even drop it. Alright. A little flat piece to push against. need assistance anymore. We got it to move. So what we want it to do is get it to come up a little bit. Yeah, I know this is broke and I think OTC even sent me a new one because they seen this one is broke, but this one I've modified so much by grinding it down to get the right angles on it. I don't want to give it up. It's like a, you know, it's just one of the tools you don't want to give up, even though it's broke. I see their new one is a little different style. It has a detent that holds that little guy in instead of a snap ring. There, the race is off. Press the spindle back in. Now I did take and chuck it in the sandblaster because I don't want to have to fiddle around with whizzy wheel, you know, to clean it up before we put the rotor on. That way we don't have a, you know, brake shake complaint. So we'll give that a little shot of the lube. Now on the back side of this bearing, as mentioned in every other wheel bearing video, we need to back it up on the inner race. That way when we push this in, it doesn't push the inner race out. We're gonna stick the little little one back there. Doesn't matter what size cup you use here, frankly, just something flat. At this point, make darn sure you didn't forget the snap ring. That's an ill feeling. We've all been there. Same guy that makes a perfect brake line flare and then finds out he forgot the nut. Snap brings in, check.
gonna put the axle back in. Definitely don't want to forget it. Well, then it'd only be three wheel drive. That is in the pumpkin. never sees inside the hub here. Keep that from getting locked up in there. It never sees it starting to get a little hard on me. Sometimes you can take, if you never see it gets all crusty like this, take a little WD, squirt it in there, stir it up, and then it gets all slimy again. Okay. Snug. Let's see where we got around here. I don't go beating on this lip real hard. I just want to try to lightly, gingerly tap it while I hold the shaft. There. Enough uh, sticking through to get the nut. If it deformed that lip, then, you know, that's where the wheel rides. You know, it's the center hub. Get the uh, nut started here, and we'll pull that through the rest of the way. Make sure you start that little fella by hand. You don't want to ruin the axle shaft. did get a new nut because see this style nut when you tighten it up then you stake it down typically you take these off and you retorque them it ends up right back where it was but often this lip is too fragile to torque it or to you know stake it down again and it can come off a little quick and dirty tip don't take it from me but if you take the one off the other side and swap them side to side it usually nine out of ten times will end up on a spot that hasn't been crimped yet so that's Free Tip Tuesday, and today is Tuesday. But the nuts are pretty cheap. To be honest with you, they're only a couple of bucks. Let's see if we can't get this one started. And we did, and we'll leave that like it is. Do not forget to come back and torque it. Let's see, now we need to see if we can get these bolts back in. Now I did hit them on the wire wheel just to give them a little bit of shine. And to make them real shiny, I am going to never sneeze them. Pretty good in case they ever have to come back out again. So we'll just never seize up the shaft there where it has a tendency to seize. And, whoa, whoa, almost dropped it on my pants. That would have been bad. And on this one, the cam was facing down or the longer portion of the lobe. It was actually almost straight down. Let's see. And the alignment bar is still over here. Dude, look at me. Adjust the toe, even just with the one cam, you see how it slides back and forth in the slot. Now you can, could have, should have marked it where it was, 
but I didn't. I'm going to never seize up this. Because to me, it's kind of irrelevant. I'm only going to drive down two miles down the road. So you see how that works. It was pretty well straight down. I'm going to take a big, big fat guess. Ah, if only they never sneeze a little at the factory. That would have been real nice. You know how much extra cost that would add into vehicle production, time, labor, materials. Right, so leave that loose for the time being. I also cleaned up the bolt that goes in the front on the old whizzy wheel. We will get that one never seized up in the same manner. It's amazing how easy they slide in. I say that before I even slip this one in. And to know like that just a couple thousandths of clearance of rust. What kind of a headache it can give you. A big one in some cases. However, for us folks in the Northeast, just part of the job, I guess. I don't get too pumped up about it. I think when I retire, I'm gonna retire in like Arizona or something. Just work on cars and be happy. Throw away my torch set. Before you put the rotor on, make sure the inside hat of the rotor is clean and free of debris. Otherwise, the time you took to uh, clean this hub up is kind of worthless if your rotor sits on there all cockeyed. Know what I mean? So we'll hit her up with some fluid film. We'll find our holes. Stick that little guy back on. Find out what this guy did with the screws. There they are. Stick them back in. I don't kill these things, just light. If you still have them. If you don't, forget about it. You don't need them. Decoration. Stick our caliper back on. Now this is just about due for rear brakes. They're looking a little bit on the sad side. I will make the customer aware of that. However, there's still friction material left. So we're just going to put them back on. Torque to spec, naturally. caliper hose bracket which I suppose we could put a little never seize on these might as well we've already made the mess right where is it I think that's it I think this was our last two remaining bolts I just have to torque the axle hub nut down Stake it over. That's it, baby. According to Hondu, service info on this model, it is 134 FTLBs. Jet click, and then we will stake it down. That's it. Shame on you. You guys thought I was going to forget to tighten these up, didn't you? So, what you have to do is set it down on the ground, or if it's already on jack stands, you have to take and load up the suspension to its normal ride height before you tighten these up. 
even though we're gonna loosen this one again. But this way, just in case it's dead on the money, then you gotta worry about it. And take your other one, torque it to factory specs. folks, a rear wheel bearing on your 2005 Hondu CRV doing it on the car to avoid unhooking parking brake cables and everything else. I did use the OTC hub grappler. Actually, I used the OTC hub tamer, the older version of the hub grappler. Very similar, a few different components. However, they don't make that one anymore. They just make the hub grappler. Links in the description box below. I think everything went pretty smooth. Uh, especially being you know 13 years old in the rust belt that could have been a whole lot harder uh, there's you know we'll cross that bridge when we get there patience is key lots of spraying patience air hammer that's how you get bolts out and heat sometimes swearing that helps also I'll go over some of the tools that we used because you guys always ask about that done a few videos on them, especially the mini duck let's have a look it's a two dollar tour okay so the mini doctor, I did do a video on this. One of my more popular videos. Got a lot of hate on it because this is a very expensive tool. The newer ones, this is a very old tool too. I've had this one for a long time. It's big. She's a long one. The new ones, I think it's the mini doctor two now, is quite a bit shorter. Various coils on it. Uses induction. There's some other coils that I have in my bit of kit. I think these things set you back four or five hundred bucks. But in a situation like we had, you know, with this inner nut, wherever it was, can't even tell now. Yeah, right up in here. That works out great because you can see the CV shafts right above it. And we didn't want to burn everything up. We just need to give it a little bit of heat. So we use that guy. Of course, the 10 pound slide hammer. Always works wonderful. The earthquake from the Harbor Freight. That's the 3 8 one. The half inch, she is still rocking in the rear world. What else we got laying out here? The humble impact driver. Nice bit of kit to have. If you guys don't have one yet, did a video on that tool. Two, very useful tool. That one is by Mac, of course. The brake clean, not to be forgotten. What else do we have? Oh yeah, dun 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 dun. Big nasty. Things mean. Mirror snake, the Astro 4980. Rocking. Uh, everything else pretty standard. Snap ring pliers, alignment bar. The actual torque wrench. You guys saw we always just torque spec. There she is. That's a snap on. This is the OTC Hub Tamer Elite 6537. Don't believe they make this one anymore. It has been replaced by the Hub Grappler. And there it is, handy bit of kit for doing rear wheel bearings and such. I've had that sucker for a long time, I think since 05 or 06, I bought that. Been a while. And I think that was it. Oh yeah, we used the Harbor Freight 3 8 ratchet. And that's it. And that's your $2 tour. Slightly better than the nickel tour. Go down below, leave your questions, comments, criticisms, and concerns. Hit the thumbs ups if you like the video. Thumbs down if you don't. Tell us why we suck. We always like to hear that. Leave any suggestions that you have that may be helpful to myself and other viewers watching the video. And just remember, viewers, if I can do it, you can do it. Thanks for watching.